Have you ever wanted to use a M.2 SSD inside your camera to store your photos and videos on? Well, luckily, with this adapter right here, you can do just that. You can take your M.2 2230 SSD, insert it inside this enclosure, and then take this enclosure and insert it into a camera that takes a CF Express Type B card and use it just like how you would with any other CF Express Type B card. So why would you buy an enclosure and a separate SSD to do this instead of just buying a commercially available CF Express Type B card? And the big reason is cost. These enclosures plus SSDs can be half the cost or sometimes even much cheaper. This enclosure is roughly $40 and a 256GB compatible SSD starts at about $25 and can go up from there depending on the capacity you want. While a commercially available CF Express Type B card is roughly a dollar a gigabyte for some of the more premium models and cheaper ones are maybe about 50 cents a gigabyte. For my testing today, I'm going to be using a Canon R5, which is capable of making about 20 gigabytes per minute of data, which is a massive amount of data and why card standards like CF Express Type B had to be made to put all of this video data on quickly and that is able to fit in a card and meet the thermal and power requirements. And actually, internally, CF Express cards are just PCI Express devices with NVMe. Pretty much the same as an internal M.2 drive. But compared to an internal M.2 drive, there's no like exposed chips or circuit boards or anything conductive. It's all covered in either metal or plastic, so it can be thrown in a bag, dropped, or other things, and still plugged into a camera and working. I'm first going to take a look at performance of this enclosure because it's the most important part of a card. Determining the performance of this enclosure can be a bit complicated because it is almost all due to the SSD internally. It might also be due to some things like thermal throttling, but I could not find any issues doing it during my testing. And here's the performance I got on my enclosure with a Kioxia BG4 256GB SSD and my Canon R5. All of the 1080p and 4K modes other than 4K 120 were perfectly fine with no write speed limits on the card. The 8K modes, including 8K RAW, 8K RAW Lite, and 8K All Intra, ran into card write speed limits. But 8K IPB and 8K IPB Lite were fine. It seems like there's a cap at about 1.5 gigabits per second where this BG4 SSD would limit me. For photography, I didn't notice any write speed limits that I did in video. So for example, I took over a thousand photos with the maximum burst speed and rated it for it to empty the buffer and then filled the buffer up again and I couldn't get it to slow down like it did in video mode after an extended period of time. And the buffer under normal situations would clear extremely quickly just like a commercial CF Express card would. From communicating with Zite, the newer Kyoxia BG5 SSDs should be capable of doing 8K RAW on this camera for an unlimited amount of time and will not hit any write speed limits. A few more notes speed wise is that a larger SSD is typically faster than smaller ones, so the 1TB model of the drives should be faster than the 256GB models, likely allowing for longer continuous recordings. Most SSDs are rated in burst write speeds, which is the maximum write speed they can achieve when writing to their SLC buffer. Once that buffer fills up, they'll have to write directly to the slower NAND on the rest of the drive. Most drive manufacturers don't tell you what the slower drive speed is for the rest of the drive. On the other hand, SD cards and a lot of drives designed for camera use where sustained write speeds are needed list something like the V rating on an SD card, which is an actually sustained write speed reading. So a V30 SD card is actually rated to write at over 30 megabytes per second for the whole SD card. And that's a spec you don't normally see on most M.2 or other SSDs, making it a lot harder to determine which SSDs can actually write at the full speed of 8K RAW or whatever the highest speed your camera can record at, while it's easier to determine that on an SD card. So I almost always looking at the drives and trying to figure out how you could determine it. Zetave manufacturer tries to make this a little bit easier by having some supported models, but they don't list all the performance characteristics of every drive they've tested and how much sustained speed it's guaranteed to hit. If you're using lower performance modes, like a lot of 4K modes, especially the inner frame ones that might be only like 200, 400 megabit or something like that, you're probably going to be fine as they're relatively low data rate. But when you start getting into like the 8K modes or the all intra frame or the raw video modes, that's where it starts to get a lot more complicated. And if you're using a commercially available card on some of these cameras, sometimes they have like a guaranteed to work list. But with the amount of different SSDs you can use in these enclosures, you don't have that guarantee list. 
Here's what's included with the Zete CF Express SSD converter. An instructional booklet, some stickers to identify the size of the drive you put in the enclosure, the enclosure itself, some thermal paste, a Phillips screwdriver, and some screws to hold the enclosure together. Build quality wise, I was very impressed with this enclosure. It's all made out of CNC metal, feels very solid with no obvious defects. And compared to some of the commercially available cards I have, there's no plastic on the outside. And this plastic actually caused me issues because in some of my card readers, I ended up using kind of my fingernail to pull it out and it broke away some of the plastic. And that shouldn't be any of the issue on this enclosure because it's all made of metal. The assembly process took me about 15 minutes and was relatively easy overall. I took my M.2 SSD that I had, put the little pin converter on it that converted the M.2 pins into the little pads that the CF Express standard used. I then took the combination M.2 SSD and pin converter, slotted it into the enclosure, put a little bit of thermal paste on. I wasn't exactly sure what to do, but looking at the product page, I saw kind of a demonstration of the thermal paste being placed on top of the main chip on the SSD. I then put the enclosure together and put the six little Phillips screws in. Putting the Phillips screws in was a little bit annoying as they're kind of small and fiddly screws and the screwdriver included isn't great but luckily it's the type of thing that I'll only have to do once. I also wanted to do a little bit of testing of power consumption to find out if this is a Tay drive with an enclosure differs from my commercially available Angelbird AV Pro SE drive. So I took my camera, plugged it into the wall, and measured wall power in different tasks. And the Zetay drive in different video modes would use about a quarter of a watt more on average compared to my Angelbird drive. I don't think that would be enough to cause significantly different overheating problems or power problems. Overall, I was very impressed with this enclosure. It worked just like any other CF Express card, which was great. I could plug it into my other camera, I could copy files to my computer, I could format it, and it could work just like any other commercially available CF Express drive with no downsides that I noticed that were due to it being an enclosure instead of a commercially available drive. And since this drive is so much cheaper, it makes a lot of sense. And I plan on buying more of these enclosures and using more of these Keoxia drives in the future if I need more cards for this camera rather than buying commercially available drives. I don't see a reason not to save the money. And yes, I lose out on the ability to do the highest bitrate modes on this camera, but I don't see that being an issue. Shooting 8K RAW just doesn't make sense for me. The files are huge and a pain to work with, require massive system performance to actually be able to edit it well, and you're watching it on YouTube where well, it's going to get all that extra detail compressed out of it anyways, so a viewer wouldn't notice. I'm going to make my workflow easier by dealing with smaller files, and I'm going to save a few bucks by using a cheaper drive, and I think for most people creating content online, that makes sense, and going with an enclosure drive like this can save you quite a bit of money, and actually have no real downsides in all the usage I have done testing with. Thanks for watching this review on a Zete CF Express SSD converter, and let me know what you think of this. Have you ever used a CF Express SSD converter or what are your experiences of CF Express drives been like in the past?